In a narration found in Jami a TMZ number 3371, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, advised that supplication is the essence of worship. This is because it is a practical demonstration of humility and one's servanthood to Allah, the Exalted, as it is befitting for the servant to ask from the Master. It is important to know that according to a narration found in Jami a TMZ number 3604, Every good supplication is accepted in three ways. It is either fulfilled, the equivalent reward is given in the hereafter, or an equivalent evil is removed from one's life. In the following verse, Allah, the Exalted, guarantees a response to all those who perform supplication. Therefore, one should always bear this in mind and persist in supplications. Chapter 40 Gafur, verse 60. And your Lord says, Call upon me, I will respond to you. Even before supplicating, one should ensure their earnings are lawful, and what they consume is lawful. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, has clearly warned in a narration found in Jami a T Z, number 2989, that the supplication of a person who earns and consumes the unlawful will never be accepted. The first etiquette of supplication is that one should try to face the Qibla when supplicating. This was the tradition of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. An example of this action is found in Sunan and Nasai, number 2899. One should raise their hands begging Allah, the Exalted, to fulfill their desire, as this was the practice of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number 1030. In a narration found in Jami a TMZ number 3556, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, advised that Allah, the Exalted, is too shy and generous to turn away a beggar empty-handed who raises their hands to him. One should begin and conclude their supplication by first praising Allah, the Exalted, and then sending blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. This has been advised in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawud, number 1481. In fact, as mentioned in a narration found in Jami RT Z, number 486, a person's supplication remains suspended between the heavens and the earth until they send blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. One should praise Allah, the Exalted, with phrases mentioned in the Holy Quran or the narrations of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Peace and blessings be upon him. The beautiful names of Allah, the Exalted, are found extensively throughout these divine teachings and should be utilized. For example, chapter 59 Al-Hash, verse 24. He is Allah, the Creator, the Producer, the Fashioner. To him belong the best names. The best supplications are found in the Holy Quran and the narrations of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him and therefore should be used. For example, chapter 14 Ibrahim, verse 41. Our Lord, forgive me and my parents and the believers the day the account is established. But it is absolutely acceptable to supplicate for specific things, as long as they are lawful. As advised in the Holy Quran, one should supplicate to Allah, the Exalted, with humility, hoping for His mercy and in fear of His greatness. Chapter 7 Al-Araf, verse 56 and invoke him in fear and aspiration. It is vital to supplicate with enthusiasm full well believing Allah, the Exalted, will fulfill one's needs. In addition, as advised in a narration found in Jami a TMZ number 3479, Allah, the Exalted, does not respond to someone who supplicates while heedless or distracted. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, Peace and blessings be upon him, has advised in a narration found in Jami R T M Z number 3505, that when the following verse of the Holy Quran is recited, the supplication is always accepted. Chapter 21 al Anbiya, verse 87. There is no deity except you, exalted are you. Indeed, I have been of the wrongdoers. One should seal their supplication with the word Amin, as this ensures its acceptance. This has been advised in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawud, number 938. After the supplication is concluded, it is a practice of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to wipe one's hands over their face. 
This is confirmed in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawud, number 1492. Finally, one should be persistent in supplicating, as giving up is a hasty action which can lead to the supplication being unfulfilled. This warning is given in a narration found in Jami, Atimiz, number 3387. One should make it a habit to remember Allah, the Exalted, in times of ease, so that Allah, the Exalted, will help them in times of difficulty. This is advised in a narration found in Musnad Ahmad, number 2803. As advised in a narration found in Jami, Atimiz, number 3499. Allah, the Exalted, readily accepts the supplication made after the obligatory prayers and in the last part of the night. A narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number 6321, advises that in the last part of the night, the divine descent occurs at which point Allah, the Exalted, calls out and responds to supplications. There is a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, Number 521, which advises that the supplication between the two call to prayers is never rejected. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, has declared that a Muslim is closest to Allah, the Exalted, while they are prostrating and they should therefore supplicate to him at this time. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sunan and Nasai, number 1138. As mentioned in a narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 1046, there is an hour during every Friday where Allah, the Exalted, readily accepts supplications. When a fasting person breaks their fast, their supplication is also accepted. This has been advised in a narration found in Sunan I.B. near Majah, number 1753. One should ask the sick to supplicate for them, as it has been advised in a narration found in Sunan I.B. near Majah, number 1441, that their supplications are like the supplications of the angels. The supplication made when drinking Zamzam water is always accepted. This has been advised in a narration found in Sunan I.B. near Majah, number 3062. A narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2540, advises that the supplication at the time when it rains is accepted. A narration found in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 1534, encourages people to supplicate for others in their absence, as they are readily accepted. If one is facing any form of oppression, they should supplicate to Allah, the Exalted, as they will be accepted. This has been advised in a narration found in Jami, Atimiz, number 1905. This same narration advises that the supplication of the traveler is never rejected. Finally, one should encourage their parents to supplicate for them, as they are readily accepted. This is supported by a narration found in Sunan I.B. near Majah, number 3862. Some do not regularly supplicate to Allah, the Exalted, as they claim that He is all aware and requires no one to inform Him of their desires. Even though this is a fact, it is better to supplicate, as this is the tradition of all the holy prophets, peace be upon them all, and has been advised in the Holy Quran. Chapter 40 Gafur, verse 60. And your Lord says, Call upon me, I will respond to you. Indeed, those who disdain my worship will enter hell rendered contemptible. Supplicating is an excellent way to demonstrate one's humility and servanthood to Allah, the Exalted. In fact, as mentioned in a narration found in Jami, RT Z, number 3370, nothing is more honorable to Allah, the Exalted, than supplication. Finally, Allah, the Exalted, becomes angry when a person does not supplicate to him, as it may indicate they believe they are independent of Allah, the Exalted, which is not true. This is confirmed in a narration found in Jami, Atimiz, number 3373. Finally, one must always remember that the supplications found within the Holy Quran and the established traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, are secondary to actions. Meaning, the supplications are performed after an act of practical obedience. This indicates that supplications support actions. Therefore, supplications without the practical obedience of Allah, the Exalted, are unlikely to be fruitful. This was not the habit of the holy prophets, peace be upon them, or the companions, may Allah be pleased with them. Unfortunately, many Muslims have become excellent at making supplications, but fail to practically obey Allah, the Exalted, 
which involves using the blessings they have been granted in ways pleasing to him. Even the main narration under discussion indicates the importance of practical worship, which is supported by supplications. Supplications cannot replace practical obedience, they instead support them. Both must be present in order to achieve peace and success in both worlds. Chapter 35 Fatir, verse 10 To him ascends good speech and righteous work raises it, 